Hi and welcome to Unscripted with AK. Uh, today on this chat we have a very special guest besides being a talented and successful writer, actor, director across mediums and hopefully I'm going to get him to talk about things that he doesn't usually talk about. Let's welcome Sumit Vyas. Uh, welcome to the show Sumit. Hi um, Baba. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh in one of the early episodes it's great that it's you Are because it. i am under less pressure because it can be <laughs> but we can't make it as normal a chat as we normally do because do. apparently bad language is not allowed oh which is an important part of our conversation, oh, conversation. So, so we might have to control that a little bit <laughs> but uh, but welcome and uh, this is unscripted with uh, ak akash kunal unscripted like nice. most of my plays uh, <laughs> that <laughs> that also you have been part of yes or you've made it seem unscripted uh, at times which we'll get to at some point of time without the bad language again of course but uh, but, but thank you for being here and uh, i um, uh there's a lot we have to try and cover and uh, of course theater centric but also about all the other work that you've done and but uh, i thought maybe it's best to kind of start from the the beginning so you're originally from jodhpur hmm. uh, which is yes. where which is where you were born were you born, born in, yes. in in jodhpur yes. and then when did you uh, move to bombay so my parents sort of moved first i must have been 2 2 and a half when my younger sister shruti was born and mm. my father decided to move to bombay and pursue a career here and because uh, he had already spent 2 years here my mother was like i have to come there but i can't bring this boy because he's <laughs> out of control so <laughs> she <laughs> so she left me with my nani in, in jodhpur. jodhpur okay okay and she moved with my younger sister and then i was there up till i was 4 4 and a half years old and then my nani also said that I can't do this anymore. So control. you you take <laughs> so, him. Basically passing the buck. Yeah. So, so then I was again like then I moved to Bombay. But do you remember anything of growing up in Jodhpur? I mean, I remember very faintly. You know, the earlier first year of school, nursery, senior KG, whatever, and uh, we used to actually go in a tanga from my <laughs> uh, nani's house to the school. Wow. And, But like a school tanga with other kids. Huh? With other kids, there was nice. one tanga. All the kids were put up and. I remember was, <laughs> nobody will believe me our mera nanial jo tha wo ek aise chadai pe tha it was like a steep road that came to and the tanga is to go and the horses would really struggle to like pull it and then couple of time it flipped also yeah re tanga gir gaya tanga gir gaya with you all in it with you with us in it Haan, then nice. all the kids were like are re tanga gir gaya now when i think about it it's like isn't there a massive safety issue it, like nobody thought about it it is i mean maybe that's why you all moved to bombay and <laughs> i guess yeah. so <laughs> But uh, do you speak the language, or do they speak the language at I home? Do. Like at home, does anyone still? Uh, I speak. My mother speaks. Uh, my dad speaks. This is so. Weird. This is Marwadi. No, Marwadi. What is, what is the language called? Marwadi. Marwadi. Okay. Yeah. In fact, when I moved to Bombay, because I used to speak in Marwadi all the time at home, and my father categorically said that no, the kids will speak in Hindi. and clean hindi because otherwise there is a accent marwadi accent that comes that. into the hindi into the hindi oh. and he didn't want that okay so for uh, like a large part of our growing up years we would speak hindi and much later then they started speaking marwadi is like okay now we are through with that whatever phase of, phase that, of yeah. that did you ever get to use the marwadi later like in any of your acting or anything did you ever manage to did you little bit i just did oh, i did a film with sudhir mishra ha yes in which which is based in jodhpur and whatever oh how nice okay ha huh. and i was playing that part and he was like if you want to use a little bit here and there you can so i used quite a bit it was fun but is that easy or difficult that because you one learned it you're kind of bringing it back and you're using the in the hindi also i'm assuming the accent is yeah. there so then is so that the, feel put on or is that natural or is that like a so the accent is tough to right. do uh, if i have to speak marwadi i can but to speak hindi with that accent is slightly tough because it's very close to haryanvi you know like there's a very small this difference between a haryanvi and a marwadi accent uh so that is tough then i would like hear people around me and how they speak hindi because they were all marwadis and they yeah. had that and then i would ape that so uh, speaking of your dad uh, and this is actually uh, this is something even before i had met you that uh, because my father has also been a writer yeah. and uh, you know work in television had of course happened and yeah. uh, your your father was also a part of ipta if i'm not ipta uh, and yeah. ekjot ipta and ekjot so there was a but there was this 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 little bit of a myth about vyas ji 
as as uh, as Mr. B M Vyas is uh, yeah. as, as Vyas ji being this uh, bit of a legend. <laughs> at least in the television writing world, I think there was a he was yeah there was quite an aura about this 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 gentleman. Uh, tell us a little bit about dad. Like, wh- like, what was his journey like? What was like? Where did he? How did he? He's from NSD. He's from NSD, and then he and wanted to be an actor. No, he okay. had actually, uh, I think, mastered in NSD in direction. Oh, nice. Okay, he wanted to direct. I think uh, he was quite resistant, resistant to acting. Hmm. And then he moved here, and that was not happening. Then he started writing a little bit. He moved to Mumbai to be a director. Yeah. Uh, of like of uh, films of films okay okay and i think that didn't happen for some time and then uh, and we were born and he had to do something so he started writing uh, in the meantime and then he sort of continued and then he wrote a bunch of things he was one of the writers on discovery of india wow bharat ek khoj uh, i think he did a small part in udan the show the tv the, show the, the, with the female police officer Poli- that, police, yeah. uh-huh. right right yeah. and uh, then he was i think he wrote tara wow uh, tara Umeer. was huge yeah, so. Uh-huh. so he was like the main guy around yeah i think that's where maybe my dad crossed paths with him because of raman kumar yes, there was a there yes. was a because i think uh, dad worked with raman kumar briefly yeah who was quite a Quite a quite a name in the television industry at least. He was uh, the first big guy. Yeah, you know, he was. Like, yeah, so Track Cinema was uh, the biggest. Uh, Track Cinema, yeah. Company at that time. Yeah, I mean it's weird that a lot of people who are probably listening to this will not even get any of these references. Yeah, uh, particularly like Tara was Tara. the first daily satellite show. Yeah. my dad would tell me stories like uh, now the way the system is and they have to go and sort of please a bunch of people and they. dictate terms back in the day they would just take decisions that we should cast him and this is how the episode would go and as in the creators had more power yeah yeah uh-huh. absolutely there was no interference or uh, whatever that from the channel sounds like utopia today but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean yeah tara was huge and i think uh, i mean a lot of people who don't know about it should probably google it and yeah, uh, yeah it was a huge navneet show. nishan and and navneet uh, nishan yeah it was it was quite a massive so so he was he was writing that on a, yeah. and, and uh and what about theater did he kind of stay in touch with that all through this as well so he so was initially he was doing sort of juggling between the two and then i think at some point he had to sort of take a complete back seat from theater and fully get into writing uh you know when things had started rolling for him and he couldn't give time to theater did uh, he ever write any plays uh no i don't think so i don't think he's written plays yeah, he may no, have okay. adapted or whatever right. but he right. has not written i get asked this a lot and because uh, so the thing is of course uh, my father akash kurana is has has been an actor and he's better known as an actor but he was also a writer and he wrote yeah. a lot of films and and in that sense I, when i was going to school <laughs> i was actually kind of growing up around a writer hmm. um and i feel that that influenced me in a big way uh, when you're kind of you know growing up around someone who is creating stories and mm-hmm. and i used to kind of get used as a little bit of a bouncing board uh, at that time and it was probably inappropriate because i was too young to be uh, <laughs> you know uh, subjected to uh, plot twist from bazigar which he wrote wow. uh, because you know uh, and my brother adhar makes jokes about why our concepts of love are twisted <laughs> because my father wrote bazigar <laughs> and probably narrated it to us while it was happening so So, uh, uh, how was schooling in uh, in in the in the Bombay thing? What do you remember from like those early days of you know growing up? And you were in a school in Bhandar as well. Yes. And and yes. so what was that like? And uh, rough. Uh, it in, was. Why, why do you say <laughs> that? Why do you say that? Because it was you know it was a pretty rough school and uh, I wasn't a particularly good student uh, and kept I kept getting worse as I was growing up. and i had nothing better to fall back on like yesterday at shoot they were asking for some pictures ke childhood pictures de do set pe lagane ke liye chahiye you know you must have won some award or something or so. <laughs> i said i have no awards <laughs> in my entire schooling career and college i did not win a single award single certificate single trophy there is no picture because it never happened wow <laughs> because i was a f- <laughs> fuck up <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to keep fuck up? I don't know, but <laughs> so, okay. So basically, since you're our guest, uh, there's a team of people who've been researching you. Uh, oh. I don't know how insecure that makes you feel, but there was a lot of digging done into your past, and huh. uh, uh, 
but uh, there there is some theory somewhere which may have been through one of your interviews that you were a bit of gunda in school is i was matlab so, i was pursuing that career pretty actively and <laughs> that's a good da okay i was <laughs> shiva had just released so ah, we were right. like yeah. we wanted to and then nobody told us that chain hath mein laga ke jab aap marte ho to aapka bhi hath toot jata hai correct correct so correct. i fractured my hand doing correct, that correct and, and bit of a gang also i was tall and slightly overweight so it was you, you know were easy overweight? i was pretty overweight like and uh, and when tall people grow fat na they grow very oddly fat like it's like a balan or like a pear or oh, yeah, yeah like so, a pear yeah. you know so i was that <laughs> so, i have never i've always imagined you as a lanky kid but yeah sure yeah. so hmm. and then yeah i was just you know get into fights get beat up or beat people up and my father was pretty unaware of that and So you were basically unaware of each other's lives quite yeah. honestly like he yeah. didn't know what you were He didn't know to. what I was <laughs> up to you were, okay and I also think it's really weird because it's almost like now 5 saal mein generation gap ho jata hai ha ha abhi wo matlab wo gap kam ho gaya like matlab there Correct. are people that like, you know and now if this like 20 years younger to you don't even know what they're talking about yeah so uh, like a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah. lot of youngsters listening to this won't know what we are talking about what <laughs> so, we're talking so, about so you know on your set it happened and shiva and god knows what the hell <laughs> on yeah. your set it happened bro i was at the at cafe jugadistan ha ha jugadistan yeah yeah is at the cafe eating breakfast and I had these bunch of youngsters. They were also eating, so they said, "Come eat with us." And then they were talking to each other, and their conversations would jump. Yeah. In seconds. Yeah. And by the time I would be on, it's like, "Abhi to tum is baat pe baat kare the. Ab tum ye. Why am I not understanding? Think, yeah. What do you want to talk about? Why?" <laughs> <you? laughs> I mean, we are aging. It's too quick. We are aging. I tell you. I so, guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, okay. So uh, uh, so we. Uh, now again another thing is that uh, there's this uh, rumor which maybe you can confirm that you didn't complete college i so, actually did oh, so you did. okay what so, happened was that i failed in like 8th and then i failed again i cleared it then i failed in 9th and then one tuition teacher said isko 10th private kara do kyunki aise do do saal karke to bahut time lag jayega khatam karne mein to agar 10th mein hi maan de shuru ho gaya to 10th mein fail bhi hota hai to kam se kam do saal mein to kar lega ha But tenth I cleared, and then eleventh I failed again. Then then I cleared that eighty K T twelfth private and twelfth again I was failed, and then I did eighty K T. It's like just not happening. I mean, me and education is not a thing. We are like, not getting so along. Yeah, it's yeah. not. And my father was kind enough to you know like understand that, and he's like, okay, it's fine if it's not happening. You got to do something in life. You know, what do you want to do? Like, you want to go out and maybe like open a tea stall or something. Nice. So his friend, uh, sort of, he was writing this show called Rishte. Yes, I'm aware Z. of this. Yes, yes. And uh, that was being edited at a editing studio. So his okay. director friend said, "Ki usko wahan laga do editing studio me. Wahan rehega, make him an intern, and if he learns something, then he'll probably get a job at least." So I joined an editing studio when I was like 16 or something, and I was just hanging there, and then gradually I started. learning and started editing promos for you actually sat on the sat on the edit table nice. and uh and then i started with like editing promos for countdown shows oh wow uh, okay because that back in the day there used to be a lot of these countdown like shows like philip top 10 philip top 10 and all, yeah, yeah, and all yeah, of that yeah, sure. and then i would edit uh, so for a year i was editing there and then my father was finally like okay like he's got some job kuch 5000 rupees salary bhi aa rahi thi to I also felt like okay, I'm on my own now, and it's great. And But and also, I mean, I, I I personally believe that editing is also pretty critical in terms of learning storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, very, I mean, maybe very. that kind of helped in that sense because it's a. I mean, I wish I would have had an experience like that earlier. I mean, we had to kind of yeah. learn the edit process later, uh, huh. much later. I mean, I remember uh, Dad made a feature film, and uh, uh, at that point of time, he had asked me to come to the edit, and तब वो स्टीन बैक होता था फिल्म पे कर रहे थे ना, so it was actually like cutting, splicing, cutting cementing, and, and uh, fascinating. Now when we look back at it, but at that point of time, it was like watching paint dry, you know, it was like yeah. really boring <laughs> in that sense. We're like, what is going on? <laughs> like you know like this is like one craft workshop that i've come to where like they're cutting stuff and there's like film lying on the floor and this is how they're treating uh, and I, yeah I, and even i remember i think that dad used to do a lot of acting and i used to go to film sets and find them the most boring places on earth yeah like and i it's, still i still maintain that if you are not working working then it's the most boring like place i don't you know that the, the, the spectator sport ke chalo ja kar shooting dekhte hain i honestly no, think no. that it's a it's so मतलब डिसल्यूशन हो जाता है आदमी 
कि यार ये तो कुछ नहीं कर रही एक ही लाइन बार बार बोल रहा है तो वो या इट्स done 80 kgs and everything yeah. else but there had been no brush with kind of performing arts so far no nothing, nothing so far so so where did that uh, transition happen how where, where did you go from the editing space so uh, my senior at the editing studio he was also pretty young he must have been like 24 years old and i was 16 or something and we would hang a lot hmm. we had a lot of time and i had these ideas about you know what if the story was like this and what if we would act like this and I would tell the him the stuff that you were working on. Ah, uh, I was okay, working okay, on. Okay. I would talk about performance, yeah. talk about stories, right. all the time. And he would say that, "Why don't you act?" I was like, "Why? I will, who will cast me? I'm working here in one Lakshmi Industrial Estate ka gala, and it doesn't make sense." <laughs> so that's when it started sort of seeping in that I might enjoy that, but I was too afraid to even like say it aloud. Right. That I would want to act, and uh, then at seventeen. Uh, my father called, called me you to, to see watch a play. A play. Okay. And Do you I remember what play that was? It was sort of a, a collage of all the plays that they had done. They had done a lot this of classes. Which group at this point? Ekjut. It was he was already with Ekjut then. Yeah. Okay. okay. He had left Ekjut, but like they were friends. Right. 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 So it was a collage of all the classical plays that they had done. Okay. Yehudi ki ladki and Jasma Odan and whatever all these bigger productions that they had done. and he was playing sort of the narrator of the whole thing they were doing uh, pieces from all of them, like a Piece. review okay huh. so okay right. and i went there and i saw prithvi after oh, going up for the okay. first time yeah. and i went backstage i saw him sitting at the light booth uh i went to meet him i'd never seen my dad in that light yes of course yeah. being an actor and you know he was sitting with the script he was doing his lines and it was quite quite a sight i was blown by it and uh, from that light booth i saw one actor you know sort of rehearsing his piece and sort of taking light and all of that and i still have that image in my mind and i was like fuck what is this place i want to be here i wish i could be here you know you also watched the show then i then i watched you saw the, the prep and then you okay yeah and i was blown by it you know actors were acting they were singing there was music and it just did something to me that i have not experienced yet you know it was such a strong blow and also an awakening of what your dad does because yeah. you didn't have so it's kind of almost like harry potter ish in that yeah. sense and so, yeah and i was like what is this world and i wasn't aware of it and i thought my life is going to be in that studio in that gala right. sitting in front of the screen and editing stuff and i was like no i want to get out and i came back and next day i told him that i want to do stage and he's like you have a job now why do you want to there's no money there and you know it's not as it's just it just looks cool <laughs> it's not really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like no 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 i want to be on stage and he said then you figure it out because if you're thinking that i'm going to put you on stage i'm not i'm busy i have to go <laughs> so you <laughs> so you go there and you do what you want so what did you do around that time at the rehearsals what were you doing backstage you know okay wo ja ke script xerox kara ke lao is set wahan pe jana hai to tempo mein baith ke chale jao all that i and you do. were not getting paid for anything nothing nothing this was just you were you gave up your job you showed up over there yeah and within 6 months i was sort of ki phir mujhe kuch 200 rupaye show ke de dete the kabhi ye bar bar yahan wahan ja rahe to kuch paise pakda dete the so i was sort of sustaining myself with that right uh and then i found that uh, i had to find a place where i could be of some uh, use and uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. nice. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't clock that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. And then I started playing the dholak there because they used to do a lot of music musicals and they had to source a musician every time. Sorry, there's a gentleman asleep and snoring yeah, in snoring. our studio. Uh, so, so yeah. That's how dull <laughs> theater conversations are. Hmm. So, so you were attending these uh, rehearsals and uh, and and then what? Then uh, what, like you were not getting paid at all and you no. were. running around doing odd jobs and stuff which is what a lot of people start yeah, off doing and, and then so then how did it progress to the next stage for you so what i said a lot of those actors would do television shows to sustain themselves and they wouldn't be able to attend rehearsals every day so every rehearsal one actor would be missing and they so you were stepping a, in at rehearsal yeah right. so i said i learned the lines of all the actors yeah of all the parts and whoever was missing i said i'll do proxy and i did so much proxy that they used to call me proxy kumar 
because i would just wow. proxy in for whoever was doing and i remembered the blocking like to the t and so the other actors would not miss that actor right, right. and then it so happened that you know ek show aa raha hai par wo actor ka date nahi hai then i got the opportunity then and you used to also play an instrument i used to play the dholak this is something you had learned earlier yeah or i you... learned uh, earlier mm. isn't on the job only i realized that i had a flair for rhythm and right. uh, and i started i used to do it before and after rehearsals and jis din musician nahi aata tha to main baja deta then they realize are ye to paise bach rahe hain ki musician nahi bulana pad raha hai aur yahi baja de raha hai dholak so then fir main pura hi baja de raha tha did you ever actually kind of get into the literature of that and read stuff and like you know these yeah. did you actually yeah yeah, yeah. so you know what would happen is that when i just joined in i had not read any books right no relation to literature and these people would talk about you know the, bukowski and grotowski and you know the, the chekhov and all these playwrights and i had no idea who but i wanted to be part of those conversations, conversations yeah so i started reading books just so that i could be cool <laughs> right, right. Uh, at least contribute something to that conversation uh so and that's the phase when i read the most i read you know all sorts of playwrights from badal sarkar because Great they were also Kanaad. doing a lot of those plays in doing terms a lot of the of content those. there was yeah. a yeah so so which is why i feel that in fact i uh, coming back to that question i finished my graduation because of ikchut because uh, i was there and then i had some friends who you are also aware of this friend called imran rashid who yes, runs a theater course. company now yes. pawan and i thought these people are you know they must not be educated cuz they also sound as dumb as i am <laughs> and then one day <laughs> imran said yaar maine to ma ki hai mfil kar raha tha fir yahan aa gaya and then i asked pawan he said maine bsc ki hai yaar and i was like main to ye bilkul hi 12th fail hu to i should complete my graduation wow so whatever little money i was making from theater i went to national college and i said i want to study and they said you can get arts with this mark sheet i said it's fine so i took psychology hindi literature and history and but you're saying that it's actually that being in that space that inspired you to complete your college? education yes because and of the people that you were working with and you realized that wow yeah. wow and i really benefited from the last 3 years of ba because i really wanted to know i wanted to know psychology and it has helped me tremendously as a writer as a as an actor i think all creators should know study psychology uh because it really helps it really helps in understanding where people are coming from and, and you were only doing theater at that point of time only doing theater. so this is a daily thing you would wake go, up in the morning and go to rehearsal yeah there go was to the college life. and then come back from college and go to rehearsal or do whatever w- was needed to be done uh and then i think by the time i was 20 21 my father was going through a little bit of a tough phase uh, uh work was not happening and we were struggling as a family financially and i realized that this would not cut you know we need to i need to make more money so this is this life can't we can't afford this life i can't so. afford this so i started auditioning and that's when i did my first tv show also for doordarshan i think in 2003 or 4 or aise kuch raha hoga life as a television actor mm-hmm. what was that like considering you didn't take it seriously to begin with yeah. and then i remember there was a phase where you were a really popular television actor i was doing and that. i i i do assume that you were making a good amount of money out of that which was the need of the hour yeah. but you were you were you were a marquee name you were a big television actor at, uh-huh. at that time and and i think that at that point of time the tv shows were of course more the big thing yeah i mean they, they were, were worshipped yeah, in in, yeah. in that sense and maybe that world is changing a little bit and maybe yeah. people don't know what it was like over there yeah. but what is it like what is the reality and a little bit of i want you to tell me a little bit of course of the the adulation and the fame and the glory but what about the grime also a little bit of that like what was that life like so the first tv show i did was for this doordarshan tv show and it had a, a chandar behl karke ek director the fdf i've heard of chandar behl yes sir he was directing it and mm. and now i'm glad that the first experience was with him because he was an old school director so he would block the whole thing almost like a theater piece mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like he w- he believed in that full movement of the trolley will come in and this actor will come in and yahan se two shot banega yahan se close up jayega but uh, pura scene block ho gaya theater ki tarah yeah 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 and yeah. then he would only take the essential close ups uh which now i feel like it was it's great if you have that education uh, right. as in your first project uh, your whole view of capturing a scene changes correct uh so that was great 
uh, and I had to work eight, ten days a month uh, in that. And sometimes he would, you know, because he started liking me by the end of the year or something. The, he would let me go for my rehearsals also. Kabi show aagya to date bhi adjust kar dete the. And then I, there was no work for a while. I was doing small dost ka role, ye role, wo role, chota. Ji -ji on TV. Role. On TV. Right. Uh, just trying to meet ends basically. And uh, then 2009, I did a proper TV show. Palukon ki chhao mein. I was the main guy in it. And I was the good guy, hero. <laughs> in Quintessential it. nice boy. Quintessential yeah. nice boy sort of a part. And so on the face of it, it was great because I was making money. I was very popular. I would go down and all the aunties loved me and I would go to a marriage and then I'd become the center of attention there. And <laughs> it's that phase, I, I experienced that fame and what it is like. Uh, but also it was a very taxing experience because I hated what I did. I didn't like how they went about scenes and I didn't like the fact that nobody wanted to actually do it. Like nobody believed that they wanted to do something good. They always... You're talking about the creators as well. Creators. So they were basically meeting deadlines. Yeah. They were right. meeting deadlines and they knew that, okay, yeah, it wasn't good, but that's what we have to do. I was like, but how can you work with this sentiment? When you know that something's not right and you don't want to do something about it, when you know that this actor's not good, but you want to cast him, you know that, you know, like it was a bunch of inefficient people who were affordable and who had time right. would come together to create something. So this was a larger time commitment for you. This was how many days this a month? This was full, full days. 28, 30 days. A month. A month. You were shooting I, every day. Every day. Wow. I said, I had a chutti ho gai, ho gai, varna. Every day I would wake up, drive, shoot, come back, sleep, wake up, drive, come back. Every day. It was really taxing. And uh, by the end of it, I realized that if I continue doing this, because that show was finished, then there was another TV serial. And it's like, I will never be able to do films and I'll never be able to do something that I want. This is, I'm getting comfortable with this. Now, they, because I'm popular, so they take my shit also. So if I come at a certain time, leave at a certain time, they allow me to do that. The money is good. Uh, but I'll never be able to do something interesting with my life. So I consciously took a step and I said, I, I said, no. How long were you doing this? I did it for a good two years and then I was just out of work again. From that fame to a complete collapse. But that's a choice. That's a choice. You made that choice that you didn't want to kind of do this yeah. daily drudgery. Yeah. Uh, I want to do films. Right. I got called for a film called Arakshan. Yes. And uh, so the first day we landed on shoot, uh, because Amitabh Bachchan would come and there would be a crowd of some 30,000 people, yeah. wherever he went. So we were called ke set pe aajau. We got shoved into the crowd only. And then Bachchan came and Prakash Jha was explaining the scene to him and saying, and these two are playing your whatever friend's children and they're doing this. And kaan hai wo actor kaan hai bula bula and from the crowd, we are here. Yeah, yeah, hum log actor hai. Bolo, wo humko bula rahe. And Prakash Jha, haan to ye hai, kya naam hai tumhara hai? Sumit, ye hai. Hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan. Hi, I am, how does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. But so, that means that somewhere you were enjoying the acting for camera? I was enjoying the acting for camera. Or were you like, enjoying the, the fame? Or you were no, enjoying, I no. wasn't really like blown by it. I enjoyed it a little bit and then I was like, ha, I, didn't, I didn't take it that seriously. That whole fame bit because I, I was aware that this is very temporary. Right. It is not going to last. It is because the show is on air. And the moment the show goes off air, then they're going to forget me. And if I get too attached to it, then it, it'll break my heart. So I never really let it get to me so much. Uh, to the extent that I would resist it, resist enjoying it. Uh, you know, I didn't want it. I didn't want to get attached to being famous. And uh, till today, I, you know, I almost escape it. Uh, a lot of people embrace it and they really enjoy it when you go to the airport and people really, you know, uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be visible. Because you don't want to get used to it. Yeah. And because I feel like, because the heartbreak is too much. Because it's a passing phase in, in, a, passing in a larger scheme of things. Right? Yeah. And there's more and less of it. And when you get more of it, then you don't like less of it. There is a problem. Uh, and maybe I'm not equipped to deal with it. 
you know like after that tv show ended i uh, from everybody recognizing you to some people recognizing you to some people looking at you and saying oh i've seen this is a familiar somebody. yeah and that fade out is is quite drastic and i was like oh are matlab this is is sudden uh, i knew it would happen but i didn't know it would be this dramatic yeah to nobody remembering you and in a span of 3 4 months this happened so imagine like getting like mails and you know facebook requests and love letters and letters written letters po- being posted to your house and like all of that like fan mail fan like, mail yeah i mean and from from every corner of the country yeah because tv's reach was that gifts big, so, coming in yeah. you know like somebody gifted a phone to me and matlab wo sab ho raha tha uh to nobody knowing who i was and i was like this is a bit much so then i was like i, I can't do this what the world didn't know and it's so it's so strange right that there are so two sides of it the people sending you gifts and they're writing you love letters and they're not actually aware of the kind of work that's going into that or the working conditions you're working in oh man like yeah, i remember yeah. a story you had once told me and uh, it was a it was a crazy story uh, about the sherwani you wore oh yeah uh, but be- it's better if you say it so uh, uh, so every 3 months there would be a wedding in the show yeah. yeah i was the nice guy who got married some five times <laughs> not so nice and then. somebody <laughs> <laughs> and somebody somebody was getting married some sister was getting married sister's cousin you know and then the same thing ek sherwani aayegi aur wo pehen ke ab and that sherwani was made of the cheapest material possible of course literally like plastic and whatever upar se wo zari ka kuch kaam hota tha and the ac would not work and mm. you would be sweating inside to amuman jo bahar sabko lagta hai are kya handsome handsome andar jo hai na sherwani khol ke ek banyan aur aise pajame mein aise baithe hote the sare actor wait kar rahe hain ki apna kab aayega take aaya sherwani pehni and you do your take and and they have to do that because you're using it daily so they can't even launder they it they can't launder it there's no time Yeah I mean I think yeah nobody's aware of that because you're all looking only at the beauty of the yeah, moment yeah. in in uh, wow coming back a little bit to theater uh, and you know because I've had say the 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 opportunity to work with of course besides my father who's been doing theater for years but you know Benjamin Gilani hmm. and Nasiruddin Shah yeah I've got a chance to work with them I think the discipline they had yeah is not there in a lot of the younger actors yeah I mean I was doing a play with uh, Benjamin Gilani and we had done about 50 shows of that play and and I mean he knew his part better than anybody else did yeah. but he was always between scenes sitting behind with his script In fact he was one of the few people who would have the script at rehearsal and I you know I've noticed this about uh, Kumud Mishra for example yes. and you've worked with Kumud as well yeah, yeah. he's one of the few actors who will have his script at rehearsal and yeah. a lot of them once the play has opened they don't have the the, the script, the, the the script. Yeah. have you noticed that in the theater particularly yeah. in terms of like uh, you know yeah. the discipline and they you think that have... that's changing in like a... Nadraji used to have her script yeah. every time like she had done over like I don't know some 200 shows of this play called Begum Jaan yeah. I used to do the lights for the play and she had her script this old script which had markings it had and, markings and uh, no and i remember that you know like again like you were saying about the call time like if you know if you're at prithvi and you're doing a show and it's an 11 a.m show like children's shows and there was an 8 a.m call time for the cast by 8 a.m my father and benjamin gilani would have their clothes laid out they were already there at 7:30 8 a.m they were ready to work yeah and it was such a very different kind of uh, Experience, you know just yeah. uh, the way that they uh, this i think i i even noticed this in uh, rajit right kapoor raju ji yeah, yeah raju ji he, yeah. he's very weird man he is <laughs> <laughs> you know i worked with him in uh, one on one yeah and i had changes right. so first story was this army story and then post interval i had this other story yeah so i would take off my army clothes and then immediately get onto the other clothes and i thought once the play is over i'll come back and i'll sort of put them back by the time i come back he's folded he's my clothes, clothes and he's yeah. and i was like why are you doing this don't do this to me <laughs> i said no no it's okay i mean you were there so i thought i'll arrange this and i'm thinking like he's done <laughs> i mean he's a star yeah he's so senior he's uh and he has no qualms about it yeah no i was doing a play i was directing a play with uh, my dad and shanaz patel in it hmm. 
uh, called Blackbird, and uh, they had both agreed, of course. And 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 I can take Dad a little bit for granted because I mean he's Dad. At the yeah. End of the day. But I remember that I was going for the first rehearsal, first ever rehearsal, and I was directing it. And on the way, I was having a bit of a like a panic thing, like how am I going to direct these two? These people? two. You know, yeah. like how am I going to actually tell them what to do? Yeah. Because all my life they've told me what to do, and they know <laughs> more than I will ever know. And how do I do that? And it was such a shock when I showed up. They were there like students. Yeah. Their body language and their attitude was that tell us what you want us. Yeah. To. We've come to kind of do Plus, what you want to. We are coming to make your vision come true. Correct. And it was such a weird thing because a lot of actors that we won't name that I'm working with even today, like they've come with their own ideas and they've yeah. come with their own preset, you know, preconceived notions. And it's not as easy. In fact, it's not like uh, you know, there's uh, yeah, they're not willing to kind of break their uh, their kind of structure. Uh, with with you, I think I had the best time working with you, and I learned yesterday we were talking about you on shoot, huh. and uh, you know this culture that you inculcate of bringing people together were working with you like on your set or even at your rehearsals everybody would eat together there would right. be no right. uh, big role small role senior actor junior actor you know everybody is treated equally and that really reflects in the work you do it is the energy of the set or the energy of rehearsal is good and i i have i'm a sucker for it i think it's it's most yeah, you important you know look i mean it comes from see i'll tell you what i mean i i did a corporate job for a while and i kind of ran away from that because i i knew i wasn't cut out for that work yeah. right i mean like uh, because i didn't want to wake up and go to office yeah. right and then if i'm going to choose a life say in the theater or in in making films or series it's got to not feel like work yeah it's got to kind of feel like i want to wake up and go there so it should be a picnic with good food mainly yeah. but uh, yeah but for me it's that's play. that's always been the struggle yeah uh, uh yeah like you said it's play <laughs> It's called play. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing the part, you know, yeah. and you can't take the play away from it. It's, yeah, there's no fun. You may have been best known for, and 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 I think that that is now perhaps with the web series explosion that happened, and yeah, and you know, I mean, people always talk about say tripling and stuff, but I think permanent roommates was before that, and yeah. I think permanent roommates was maybe something that was even before, like I said, the boom. It was uh, the first web series ever made. Yeah, in that sense, like you know, it is. It it was. It was the permanent image is the first. Uh, so so then you are genuinely a pioneer <laughs> in that sense. And, and there was no web series before that. Uh, nothing on TVF or anything before that, no. right? So this whole web series thing that's happened. How did that change your life? Oh, it completely changed my life. It uh, because I had seen a glimpse of fame or whatever during my TV stint and a little bit during the films English English or was a karke, but it wasn't this kind. Like this really put me out there. uh people knew and people were interested in me and also the kind of audience that i was exposed to were not the audience that would watch tv you're right you know this was the the younger people the p- p- kids from college the younger your 20 to 30 age group who had seen who had exposure to all kinds of content right and they were the audience if they liked your content they would seek you uh, as opposed to you know or tv audience and have that as an option have that as an option yeah, so, so like if if they like me and if they like something i do then they will find out who i am they'll go to my social media they'll go through and they would want to know the person i am right you know and right. that's the most interesting part about this uh, uh this phase uh so this really did it for me uh, i had no idea uh, how big it would be or whatever you know this is a complete gamble it's one of those experiments that i keep doing with my life right and it really paid off you and i can talk forever yeah uh, <laughs> but uh, studio bookings you know <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, there's a little bit of a rapid fire segment uh, you know so i'm going to quickly ask you a few questions and whatever your first thought is in 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 those um, uh some of them you've answered so you'll know them already and maybe you can uh, specify as to as to why but so so first up uh what do you prefer acting or writing acting why is that you get paid better <laughs> okay lovely and you get a vanity van <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect perfect what role that you have played in any of the mediums are you most proud of and why i mean holistically i would say mikesh which is permanent roommates roommates also it landed well it did something good for me and i honestly a lot of people don't know this but i'm not a lot like him right he's 
he has no complexes i right. wish i could be this person who mikesh was actually inspired at bits of him were inspired by pawan uttam a dear friend of mine right yes of course who i would be fascinated by and irritated by at the same time and i was because like, what you see is what you get what you see is what you <laughs> yeah, get yeah, 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 and yeah. i was like if i could create a character like this who's very annoying but very loving right it would be great so uh, you've actually had the good fortune of working with a lot of directors and yeah. producers and and uh, in in all mediums and uh, any particular director that you would like to work with one day that you haven't worked with yet i mean the realistic also like i mean not yeah. nolan necessarily but <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. i would want to work with shri shri ram raghavan right i really like his work and uh, what is the one thing you wish you learned sooner about the film industry that you have to go to the parties <laughs> you okay <laughs> networking <laughs> yeah what is the one uh, play you saw that really inspired you and kind of you know impressed you so much that you were blown away by it daya shankar ki diary it was one of the first few plays that i had seen and this is with ashish vidyarthi ashish vidyarthi had just come out you know fresh off NST. why is that why what is so special because it was a solo act and uh, i never seen a solo act before uh i i then i saw saku by by uh, right. and which also i equally loved but daya shankar ki diary was it really blew me uh of what all an actor can do and the amount of control he had over the audience uh the way he swayed everyone uh with his performance he made us laugh made us cry made us feel bad good uh in a span of one hour he did all of that and i was like whatever and held your is, attention and held my attention yeah and i didn't know nothing about theater and the arts i was just an audience member and i was blown by it and lastly uh for someone who's about to go on to stage for the first time in their lives what advice would you give them breathe just breathe better you know like i learned it like many years into acting uh once i met this actor medhi nebu yes who was english english who was in yes, english yes, english yes. and he so and he had some nice things to say about my performance and then he said you don't breathe as well just learn how to breathe in your in your scenes and when you just see what it does to you and i was like and it it didn't make sense to me but At like time, yeah. one particular show i was just breathing better suddenly i realized that a part of me was really relaxed while a part of me was very alert and you could do the two both together both together it, it's just something that you you can try during rehearsals and it's such an internal process and nobody will tell you this yeah but if you just understand how you can breathe better most important moment of your life coming don't hold your breath don't hold your breath <laughs> <laughs> just release your breath <laughs> breathe okay on that lovely note uh, mm. uh, we'll breathe easy and we'll breathe uh, easy thank you sumit thank you for for being here there's so much more we could have spoken about and okay. maybe in the next season since you are the master of seasons uh. <laughs> uh, and we'll do that but thank you so much for being a part of this thank you thank you it was lovely hi this is sumit vyas and you can catch me on the adyam podcast unscripted with akar catch new episodes on binge pods spotify and apple podcasts don't forget to follow adyam podcasts on instagram and youtube